Robert, welcome back now. To highlight how barriers to accessible reading formats violate the rights of blind and visually impaired persons, Blind SA and Section 27 recently launched a children's storybook entitled Crossing the Road, written by Kurt Ellis. It tells an incredible story of Justice Zach Yacoub, a former judge of the Constitutional Court of South Africa, who became permanently blind as a child and the challenges he faced in accessing books in Braille throughout his life. Crossing the Road has also been translated now into 11 official languages, printed in Braille and large print. But to tell us more, we are joined by Christo de, de Clac, who is the Vice President of Blind SA. Um, Christo, it's lovely to have you. Welcome to Morning Live. Thank you. Good morning, Leanne, and good morning, viewers. And it's a pleasure to be here, and thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, it's an absolute pleasure. So w when we talk about um, um, Justice Yacoub, uh, we know that he became blind when he was just 16 months old after contracting meningitis and, and faced many challenges in his road to becoming the judge of a constitutional court. Uh, perhaps you can tell us a little bit more about his life and, and how it's outlined in the storybook Crossing the Road and how it relates to him. Yes, um, he studied, you know, he was blind. He attended the Arthur Drexel School in Peter Maritzburg. After that, he went to university in KZN, got his law degree, and he was admitted as an advocate in 1973. In 1978, uh, he became uh, a judge, uh, and he was judge of the Constitutional Court until his retirement uh, some years ago. He's an amazing person. It's, it's uh, such an honor for me to have known him for many years already. And he is truly a role model for, for any other blind person. You know, he had many obstacles to achieve what he did. Mm. Um, you know, access to literature was really a big mission for, for blind persons. In fact, he will tell you that he had to become a criminal to get his law degree to become a judge because he had to make copies of his study material so that people could record them for him and so on. And that was against the, the copyright laws at the time. Mm. Um, he tells that his children had more books than he did. We couldn't convert books into accessible formats without the express permission of copyright holders. And we got that in 10% of the cases that we applied for. So 90% of the books that we wanted to convert, we were not allowed to. So he had that obstacle. And then, of course, it was apartheid times and a lot of discrimination. So for him to overcome all those things, you know, it really says a lot. Yeah, wow. I mean, this is just absolutely incredible. When you when you when you stop and think of the the the, the journey of an individual like um, Justice Zach Yacoub, I mean, the challenges that he he faced throughout his entire life. I mean, as you're saying, um, uh, you know, in accessing books in Braille. Um, and yet he, he rose above this, which is, which is something incredible to become a judge in the highest court of the land. So this story of, of the justice has now been put into book form. Uh, how are you hoping, obviously, that this will inspire children who are facing similar situations? Because this, I suppose, is, is, is something that a lot of children go through, but albeit the access is so much better. Yes, uh, let me tell you, we launched the book at the Sibonile School for the Blind here in Gauteng and we had learners present there. Um, we had the judge reading for part, uh, part of the book. Children read books, uh, parts from the book in the three languages that are presented at the school, English, uh, Sutu and Zulu. And then one of our EXCO members read the Afrikaans bit and the judge read the concluding part of the book. Um, unfortunately, he had had a back operation, so he did it in his hospital pajamas from his hospital bed via Zoom. Uh -huh. But I believe that the kids found it really inspirational and, and, and motivating. Yeah. And because the book is now available in all formats, we're distributing it as widely as possible for free so that 
uh, you know, we also uh, distributing it to all schools for the blind so that learners can read it and be inspired. Yeah, it, it, I think it's absolutely wonderful. But just let, let me ask you, how is Justice Yacoub doing? You were saying that he, he, he was there via Zoom from his hospital bed. How, how, how is he? What, what, is, what is the issue? Oh, he had a back operation, but he's fine. Okay, okay, good. As long as, as, long as he's healthy and fine and, and, and recovering yes. well. Good. Yes. Good. Please send us, uh, send him our regards, and perhaps maybe we he's will. even watching. He's even watching, and we <laughs> yeah. can we can make sure that we send our love to him personally. Yes. A very big year last year it was for Justice Jacob. I mean, he supported <laughs> your organisation, Blind SA, and Section 27 in, in in the fight before the Constitutional Court against the Copyright Act. I mean, to think that this only happened last year. I mean, it, basically, the, the discriminatory effect that it had on persons who are blind and visually impaired. Now, the court held in your favour and declared the Copyright Act of 1978 unconstitutional as it limited access to works in accessible formats such as Braille or large print. Let's talk about the significance of this judgment and how things have really improved since then. I know it's still short, but I mean, obviously, things are now opening up. Yes, um, I can just say the story was based on the affidavit uh, Judge Zach submitted in support of our application. But it's been a major victory for us because now we can convert books into accessible format as they are required. We do not have to grow before uh, publishers or copyright holders to get permission. So already we have access to so many more books um, and um, you know, we still need one aspect. We still have to push the government to accede to the Marrakesh Treaty, which would uh, put beyond doubt international exchange of books so that we do not have to reinvent the wheel in South Africa and make books accessible, which are already accessible in other countries. We believe the judgment allows that, but it is a bit arguable. So we need government to accede to the Marrakesh Treaty. But, you know, already we are seeing the benefits. Uh, schools are finding it easier to have the books from a curriculum converted into accessible formats and so on. Yeah, yeah, good. I'm, I'm glad to see this. I mean, as you say, I mean, in, the, in this book, it, it also highlights how barriers to accessible reading formats violate the rights of blind and visually impaired persons yes. in the country. I mean, 29 years into our democracy. Let, let, let's talk about some of the breakthroughs that have actually been made to rectify this. Um, well, yeah, my, my own struggle in, in the, this matter has been since 2005, you know, so it's been a very long thing. Mm. But, you know, to show you one practical example of, of the benefits, there's an international online library. It's known as the biggest, um, uh, well, uh, uh, biggest uh, uh, online library of books in accessible format. It's called Bookshare. It's hosted in the United States. They have over a million publications. Uh, before the judgment, we had access to probably only half of them. We now have access to, to almost everything. Hmm. It's it's a huge benefit. Yeah, that is it. It's that's wonderful to hear that. I really have. I know I, I visited Blind <coughs> Essay and where where you go and actually translate the books and transcribe them and you know the work that goes into transcribing them and putting them into into you know voice and braille and all of the technologies and the reality is is that I don't know if people know this but it, it's not only South Africa that you provide these these books and conversions to but it's basically the continent. I'm not sure that there are any other organizations that do this on the continent. Is that still the case? Yes, it is still the case. We provide books and magazines to other uh, countries on the continent. We also sell braille paper to other countries and so on. Yeah. Ah, fantastic. Well, let, let me ask you this, just as we, as we wrap up, the storybook, as you say, has been translated into, into 11 official languages. It's printed in Braille, it's uh, in large print, it's also available online. Um, has it been distributed to schools for the blind? Is it, is it, is it out there, people able to, to access this? Yes, yes, to all the schools. There are 22 schools for the blind, it's been sent to all of them.
Wonderful. Well, we wish you all the best. Thank you for talking to us about this. Um, that was uh, Christo de Klerk, Vice President of Blind SA, talking to us about the children's storybook, Crossing the Road. And of course, this book recounts the incredible true life story of Justice Zakia Kurb, a former Constitutional Court judge of South Africa, who became permanently blind at the age of 16 months and continued honestly to achieve great milestones against all the odds. Because I mean, just not being able to see and not being able to uh, read and access this knowledge that is so desperately needed as he moved into his position he was unable to do so and at times even did it illegally so I mean isn't that just just an amazing story so looking forward to actually uh, getting a copy of that and, and reading it ourselves so there we go that wraps up that one